Hi, my name is Lauren Ostapovich, one of the Molecular Spectroscopy Product Specialists here at Shimatsu Scientific Instruments. In this video, I'll be showing some best practices when using your new Shimatsu AirSight Infrared Raman Microscope. Before we turn anything on, let's discuss the important hardware components of the AirSight and where they're located. On the left side is the FTIR bench, which is used as the infrared source and interferometer for the IR microscope. Here I have the IR cross spectrometer. You may have a different model, but in principle, it's the same. The FTIR bench is fully operational as a standalone unit, even if it's physically connected to the microscope. If you'd like to know more about using your FTIR bench, then check out my FTIR best practices YouTube video on our channel. There's a beam switching mirror on the right side of the FTIR bench that's completely software controlled to divert the beam either internal to the sample compartment or external to the microscope. In between the FTIR bench and the AirSight microscope accessory is the transfer optics, which is two additional mirrors inside to redirect the beam from the IR bench to the microscope. Finally, to the right is our AirSight microscope accessory. For transmission IR microscope measurements, the IR beam starts in the back corner, comes to the front, goes through the sample and to the detector in the back. For ATR and IR reflection measurements, the beam starts in the same spot, comes to the front, reflects off the sample and back to the same detector. For Raman measurements, all components are contained inside the AirSight accessory. A 532 nanometer laser or 785 nanometer laser is the light source instead of the infrared beam. The lasers are housed above the sample the incident laser light is directed down to the sample and the scattered light is collected above the sample with the same objectives and measured at the CCD camera up here too. For laser safety, the black shield braces up to cover any scattered radiation to protect the user. All objectives required for collecting optical microscope images, FTIR microscope spectra, and Raman microscope spectra are all housed in the revolver here and are completely software controlled. Before turning on the FTIR bench or the microscope, the Type 2 Super Lattice Detector, or T2SL, in the air site must be cooled with liquid nitrogen. Take off the plastic cover, remove the gold stopper, and insert the funnel with the styrofoam collar. The styrofoam collar allows for nitrogen ventilation during cooling. Start by slowly pouring about 25 milliliters of liquid nitrogen through the funnel, then wait for the vapors to subside. After the cloud dissipates, slowly pour another 25 milliliters and wait again for the vapors to clear up. The dewer should be sufficiently chilled after that, and the remaining liquid nitrogen can be added quickly. The dewer capacity is approximately 170 milliliters. Be careful to avoid overfilling the dewer vessel. Pouring liquid nitrogen slowly at the beginning actually helps to increase the lifetime of the detector by reducing the risk of shocking the dewer and breaking the vacuum seal. There is a temperature sensor in the dewer vessel because the detection element of the T2SL detector may suffer from irreversible thermal damage if it's not properly cooled. The AM Solution software will notify you to inhibit FTIR measurements if the detector becomes too warm for measurement. While the detector is cooling, remove any samples from the stage and remove the ATR accessory from the objective if either are present. We can now power on the instruments. Start by powering on the FTIR bench and then the AirSight microscope by flipping on the toggle switch on the right side. With the FTIR bench and AirSight microscope powered on, open the AM Solution measurement software and click the gray disconnect button to connect to the microscope and begin the initialization process. The stage and objectives revolver will begin to move and the initialization status bar will appear on the screen. After initialization successfully completes, the gray disconnect button will change to a green ready button. If connection with the instrument fails, check that the cable between the FTIR bench and the AirSight microscope is correctly connected and that all cables are connected to the PC. Then power cycle the FTIR bench and the AirSight microscope and restart the PC. This usually solves the issue. The instrument status can be viewed by clicking the green ready button after initialization. Green indicators mean the status is operational and normal. If trouble occurs, the status light will change to red. For liquid nitrogen status, simply pour liquid nitrogen into the dewer and wait about 15 minutes for the detector to cool. In the case of the Raman fan, if the fan is on, the status will be green. If the fan is off, the status will be yellow. After the AirSight status is ready to go, you can place your sample on the stage and find the location where you want to measure. Under the microscope settings tile, select the wide field camera from the top objectives list and focus the sample using the Z height adjustment arrows. With a clear image in the top active image tile, locate your sample and overall area of interest using the X and Y adjustment arrows. Clicking the Capture One Image button will save that current image and bring it to the bottom tile as a reference. 
Then go back to the microscope settings tile and select the 15 times reflection objective from the objectives list. This objective is the 15 times magnification microscope objective and the IR microscope objective. It is important that the active microscope image is focused on the sample because the IR beam and visual microscope image follow the same optical path. So if one is in focus, they both will be. The center of the previously collected wide field image will be the center of the 15 times magnification image when the objectives are switched. But the Z height focus might be different between the two cameras. Selecting capture one image again overlays the 15 times magnification image on the wide field image in the precise location where the image was captured. Now that the sample spot is selected and focused, the FTIR parameters can be set. AM Solution software has an automatic adjustment of the lower Cassegrain, which is very important for transmission mode FTIR microscope measurements. The lower Cassegrain is a set of condensing mirrors that concentrate the infrared light on the sample during transmission mode measurements. If your data seems more noisy than normal and the microscope is focused on the sample, then run this automatic adjustment. With nothing on the sample stage, go to Instrument and select Automatic Adjustment of the Lower Cassegrain. The software will automatically move the Cassegrain that's hidden below the sample stage to the height that optimizes the infrared signal at the T2SL detector. Making a habit of running this auto adjustment will help to improve the signal to noise ratio of your transmission mode microscope measurements. For FTIR microscope measurements in reflection and ATR mode, the lower Cassegrain is not required. If your sample is really thick, removing the lower Cassegrain allows the sample stage to move further down and may help the microscope focus to the sample better and yield a better FTIR signal. With the sample stage empty, go to Instrument and select Replace Lower Cassegrain. The software will walk you through step-by-step -step instructions on how to remove the lower Cassegrain. Remember, if you plan on performing FTIR transmission measurements with the AirSight, the lower Cassegrain must be reinstalled. After you select the FTIR measurement mode, there are some other general FTIR measurement parameters to also select. Under the parameter settings tile, the first choice is resolution. This is referring to spectral resolution, and eight centimeters inverse is typical for FTIR microscopes. Number of scans is the next parameter. Similar to standard FTIR measurements, the signal to noise ratio improves by the square root function of the number of scans. If you're experiencing noisy data, try increasing the number of scans. Selecting a measurement mode of absorbance or transmission is a personal preference on how you prefer to view the data. You can always convert to the other option after the spectra are collected. The wave number range is dependent on the detector. For the standard T2SL detector, the measurable range is 700 to 4,000 centimeters inverse. If you have the optional TGS detector, the range can be widened to include down to 400 centimeters inverse. If you know which laser you want to use, you can simply turn that one on. But if you are unsure which will provide the best signal, then I'd recommend turning both on at the start because they will take some time to warm up and stabilize. A general rule of thumb for Raman excitation lasers is a higher energy laser will produce more Raman scatterers and a higher spectral signal. So it would be a good idea to start with a higher energy 532 nanometer laser, but if your sample absorbs strongly at about 532 nanometers, then you may see a large fluorescent background in your Raman spectra, which reduces the apparent signal. In that case, a lower energy 785 nanometer laser will produce a better signal to noise ratio by limiting the fluorescent background. Neutral density filters knock down the laser power reaching the sample, and the AirSight offers eight different dimming rates, ranging from 0.01 to 100%. These percentages are transmission percentages, meaning a high percentage allows more light through, but a low percentage allows a small amount of light through. Raman signal intensity increases with laser intensity, but that higher intensity also risks damaging your sample. So it's recommended that you use a neutral density filter with a low percentage and gradually increase. Similar to FTIR measurements, scans are signal averaged and the signal to noise level increases by the square root function of the number of scans. So if your peaks are buried in the noise, try increasing this value. The measurable wave number range is dependent on the laser source. The measurable range for a 532 nanometer laser is 150 to 4400 centimeters inverse, and the measurable range for the 785 is 150 to 3250 centimeters inverse. If the selected range is outside the spectrometer's viable range, then significant noise will be introduced into the spectrum due to the lack of sensitivity in that region. Exposure time is how long the sample is irradiated with laser light. 
longer exposure times lead to more Raman scatterers and overall larger Raman signal, but it also creates a risk for damaging the sample. For most measurements and samples, the default settings in this Details tab are recommended and will yield nice data. If you're struggling to achieve flat baselines in your Raman spectra, then you might consider changing some of these settings. If your Raman spectra have a large fluorescent background, photo bleaching your sample may be the solution. Photo bleaching time is simply the time your sample is irradiated with the laser source before collecting a Raman spectra. The intense laser source can introduce photolytic decomposition, which can degrade and remove the fluorescing molecules, which are sometimes sample contaminants. And with the fluorescing molecules degraded, the fluorescent background will also be removed from the Raman spectra. A dark measurement is a spectrum collected with no light hitting the detector. This measures the dark current, which is an important noise source at long collection times. If your Raman signal is weak and you are collecting for a long time, collecting a dark measurement before your sample measurement may reduce the baseline noise. A sloping baseline due to residual fluorescence may make it more difficult to interpret the data. The automatic baseline correction feature will remove that slope and provide a fluorescent-free flat baseline. Thank you for joining me for this discussion of important tips and parameters for collecting high quality infrared and Raman data with your new AirSight microscope. For more information about this instrument, please visit us at ssi.shimatsu.com. Excellence in science, Shimazu.